my name is Laura Duxta, and first, of course, I have to tell you how much I love and am addicted to your show. The only thing that doesn't work for me is that it's on at 10 o'clock at night because it's my number one reason for wanting TiVo. So inspired by the time I finish watching your show that I can't sleep and I'm wired and I'm thinking of new ideas and what I need to do next. And so I need to be able to figure out how I can start my day with you so that my day is full of your good ideas and energy. But I want to share my project with you. It is our book, I Love You More. The illustrator slash hippie is on the camera. Hey, Danny. <laughs> and um, I'm the author. And together we call ourselves Hippie and the Bald Chick. We were two former bartenders. That's how we know each other, from bartending in South Beach. And I had a good idea for a book, but no idea of how to make it happen. But it was one of those ideas that kept running through my head, running through my heart. Like somehow I knew I had to do this, but like I said, had no idea how to go from being a bartender to now a best-selling author. Self-published, we sold 180,000 copies. So I know you're a book man and I know you know that's no small feat. We of course sent it out to a handful of publishers and a handful of agents and we got a, a mailbox full of no's. And then somebody, I got on the phone with somebody and they said, you need to self-publish. You know, you'll, you have a lot of passion, a great idea. And we had an endorsement from Mark Victor Hansen. He's like, you need to self-publish. You'll need about $10,000. And I'm like, what part of unemployed bartender didn't you hear? And he's like, no, no, you'll need $10,000. So I like to say that his certainty overruled my uncertainty. And by the end of that day, actually I was thinking, well, I have 10 cousins. Maybe I can get $1,000 from each of them. But by the end of that day, I had talked to my mother, who was a kindergarten teacher for 38 years, and she offered $10,000 of her credit cards if we could figure out how to print the books on our credit cards. So we were off and running. That was August of 2001. September 11th happened, and we decided, we had to really decide if we were going to move forward with the project. And we said, now more than ever, the world will need our book and its message of love. And fortunately or unfortunately, now, still, more than ever, the world needs our book and its message of love. But um, we just, we, there's so many things that I hear you share on your show about not taking no for an answer, about, you know, being willing to allow friends and family, like, you know, enlist and enroll them. And Karen and I knew each other from our bartending days, and I was actually looking for a mutual friend's number, and she said, why? What do you have? I said, this book about love. She's like, well, I might not be an artist, but I know what love looks like to a five-year-old. So she drew the pictures with a bag of chalk she had gotten at a yard sale for 50 cents, <laughs> and we had 3,000 copies ordered. Um, I brought it in the, the first cold call that I made is I stopped down to a local gallery. I live in Fort Lauderdale, and there's a really nice street, La Solis Boulevard, and there happened to be a gallery on that street. That year, they were the number one American craft gallery. And I went in, and he's like, well, I don't really carry books. And I'm like, I know, but you know, I'm a local author. And we just got an endorsement from Wayne Dyer. He's like, I don't much like Wayne Dyer. And I was like having to pull myself up off the floor. <laughs> and he agreed. He said, you know, well, can I take 10? And as long as they don't sell, I can give them back to you. And I said, sure. You know, I thought that that was great. So that was a Monday. He took 10. By Thursday, he had sold those 10. I know fully believing that I had sent my friends and family in to buy those 10, but he took another 12, and by Monday, he had sold those 12. He said, how do they come? And I said, they come in cases of 40. And he's like, okay, come in and sit down and bring me in a case of 40. And he gave me the names of gallery owners and galleries like his across the country. So we ended up in um, the American Craftsman in Rockefeller Center in the Sheridan, Manhattan. We ended up in Kenny Bunkport, Maine, in Seattle, Washington, in Newport Beach, California, in Houston and Dallas, Texas, in uh, Asheville, North Carolina. And he, it, was, it was close to Christmas of that year. So I was calling people and saying, you know, Don Gronenberg told us to tell you we're the next Lucky Bamboo. He told us to tell you we're the next Groovy Girls. And people were ordering one and two cases and saying, overnight one case, or, you know, ship them as quickly as you can. So it's so phenomenal. We definitely found our niche market. As he ran out of the names of galleries and gallery owners, I started finding lists of galleries. We took two cross-country trips, well, one cross-country over to California and back, and one up-country to Oprah Land to saturate Chicago with the book. <laughs> and, um, it's just been, it's been a lot of fun. It's definitely our passion. It's what we love doing. We have also made our share of mistakes as first-time business owners and businesswomen. And um, I would love to share some of that with your audience, too. So 
And also, I'm sorry, I never, I don't think I ever addressed the fact that I have no hair, in case you didn't notice. And I lost my hair when I was 11, and I wore wigs for 19 years. And it wasn't until after I had the idea for the book that I decided that I was going to become the bald chick. Well, I said, Karen and I now, we call ourselves Hippie and the Bald Chick. We get to go into schools around the country and talk about love and self-esteem. And definitely it's gone from being my biggest challenge to my biggest blessing. Not only did it teach me lessons about like compassion and love and understanding, which I think helped fuel the message of this book, but now, as an author, it makes me memorable and marketable. <laughs> so, Kathy Hemming is our agent, and I know she happened to buy your book when she was at HarperCollins. So, see, we're, we're connected, Donnie. We're like family. Our minds think the same way. And you know what? Uh, joking aside, what I love about your show is how passionate you are about it, and that's why it works. You love all, like, the marketing, all the clever ideas and it just really shines through. So thank you for who you are and what you do and we'll see you in New York. <laughs> Bye.